Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today on To Can Play That Game I'm going to teach you how to play Adrenaline by Czech Games Edition which you can win in our giveaway running between the 1st and 21st of December 2016. To set up the game, you're going to want to lay out your game board. Now, the board's actually made of two parts, and both parts are double-sided. So, you'll be able to have a variety of different combinations. So, pick which side you want face up, and we'll go for the smallest sides. You then sit them side by side, and that's your game board. Then, for the basic game, take your plastic skulls and sit one on each of the skulls on the top left of the board. If it's your first game, it's recommended that you only place five skulls to make it a shorter game. However, you can then increase the number of skulls to increase the length of game. Then, shuffle the deck of small cards, which are your power-up cards, and place them in their space in the top right-hand corner of the board, face down. And then do the same with the large weapon cards, which sit just below them. You then reveal nine of these weapon cards, placing three in each of the spawn points. So here we've got the yellow, then the red, and the blue up at the top here. And these relate to the squares, so this is the space for the blue spawn, this is the space for the red spawn, and this space here is for the yellow. Then place the victory point tokens near the board. These come in three denominations, one, two, and four. And they all have the same back, so that when you have them sat down in front of you, your points are secret. And you'll then mix up all these square tiles, which are your ammo tiles, and just place them face down near the board and then place one in every non-spawn point square of the board. So here you can see there is a space for one here. Here we have a spawn point, so we don't place one, but we would place one here and here. And the squares of the board are broken down by lines across the floor. So we end up with three spaces without tiles on. With the board all set up, we then set up each of the players. So start by deciding who your first player will be and give them this tile. Then pick which colour you're going to be, either the blue, purple, yellow, green or grey. And get all your bits for that, which will be the player board of your colour, which is double sided. So you want to make sure that it's placed with the one underneath the first blood drop. And you have your actions tile which again is double sided you want to make sure that the red skull version is face down so that you have the simpler one face up and that can just sit next to your board there you'll also need your model so this is lovely model there of your color as well as the blood drops of your color and each player will have three ammo cubes of each of the colors which is blue red and yellow Take one of each of these and sit them on your character portrait. This is your ammo box and represents the ammo that you currently have. Whereas the cubes off to the side are what you have available. Each player can never have more than three of a single colour of ammo at a time. And with all that together, you are ready to play. Once everyone's ready to play, you can then get on with the game. The object of which is to get the most points. During the game, the way you'll be getting these points is by damaging someone. So if you do the first point of damage on someone, when that person dies, you'll get one point. If you've got the most damage on someone when they die, you get eight, second most six. So there's an area control on the damage going on. And you also get points for area control on the number of kills. So each time you kill someone, you'll get to mark a death. And if you have the most at the end of the game, you get a bonus eight points, six points for second most and fourth for third most, etc. So how are you going to damage and kill people? Well, starting with your first player, the first thing you're going to want to do is get on the game board. So 
draw two of the power-up cards. And these, as well as giving you an ability, which I'll go through in a moment, will give you a colour of ammo cube. So whenever you would need to use ammo of that colour, you could instead use this cube. The other thing that they do is the colour dictates where you'll spawn. So what you're now going to do is pick one of these two to discard. Now in this case we wouldn't have a choice. Whichever one we discard we'd be appearing at the yellow spawn point. But say we had a blue and a yellow. We could choose to discard either card. Whichever one we discard, which will go face up, we will then spawn on that space. So we're going to get rid of the blue one. So we place our figure on the blue square spawn point. We would then proceed with our turn. So each person's first turn they'll appear on the game board. From then on they will always be there. But what do these power-ups do? What is it you're giving up? Well first you have the teleporter. This allows you to move your figure from any square to any other square on the board with no restrictions and this costs nothing to do and it doesn't count as one of your actions. Then you've got this tag back grenade so when someone does you a wound you can give them a target and I'll explain tagging and targeting shortly when I get to that in fighting. Next card here is Newton. This allows you to move another player. You can move their figure two squares and it can be wherever you want and you don't have to have line of sight. The final thing we have here is the targeting scope. Now this is different to all the others because it does have a cost. You have to pay an ammo cube of any colour in order to use this. But what it does is when you've done an attack and done damage you can do an additional point of damage to one target. So we know what card we're discarding, we know what we're keeping and we're now on the board and ready to take our turn. And this will be the way it will work for every turn following. So we get to choose two actions to perform from the selection of three here. We have run around where you move three squares. Movement is only orthogonal in this so I could go one, two, three but I wouldn't be able to go one, two to there. It would take three because I can't move diagonally across. Also, you can move through doorways, but you can't move through walls. So here I wouldn't be able to go from this square to this square because there is a wall represented by the solid black in the way. Grab stuff, which allows you to move one square and then grab something. When grabbing stuff, there is something to grab in every square. So, for instance, I could move here and grab this ammo tile. When you grab an ammo tile, you simply add that ammo into your ammo reserve on your player. So, I would add two red and a yellow. If I already had two red on my board, I wouldn't be able to add a fourth one. So, that would go to waste. The token, of course, then gets removed from the board and will be refreshed at the end of turn, which I'll cover shortly. If I'd moved and grabbed this token here, however, you can see that as well as ammo cubes on, it's also got a card. This is a power-up card, so I would take the ammo, but then also draw a power-up card, adding this to my hand of power-up cards. But you could only ever have three power-up cards in hand at a time. The spawn point squares, however, don't have an ammo tile to pick up. When you perform a grab on these, you instead pick up one of the weapons. So there are three weapons available on each spawn point. I'm not going to go through what all the weapons do. There is a weapons guide that will explain all of this. What I will say is that weapons where they have this line between have two different types of use and you pick which one to use. If any picture has ammo cubes next to it, it's going to cost you additional ammo to use that effect. If they have white squares like this, it means that they have additional effects. So where this is an alternate effect that you can do, these are additional. So you do the main effect, plus you can do 
anything in the squares. And again, ammo cubes represent where you have to pay extra to do that. So when you grab a weapon, you will put it in your hand. But there'll be a cost associated with this because weapons need ammo. But they come with a bit of the ammo already. So you can see here that this yellow cube is in brackets. That means that it comes with that yellow cube. So when you pick this up, you don't have to pay that. But if we look at this weapon here, we can see that it has a yellow ammo cube and two blue cubes. So to pick this up, we can ignore the one in brackets. So we'd have to pay a blue and a yellow cube in order to grab this weapon. So we'd move the blue and yellow cube off of our character portrait into our ammo reserve and then this weapon would be in our hand. So we just hold it in our hand so that no one can see it. As with the power-up cards, you can't have more than three weapons at a time. So if you want to pick up a new weapon and you already have three, so say I wanted to pick up this sledgehammer, I would have to return a weapon I've already picked up to the space where the sledgehammer comes from. And shoot. Although it's called shoot, it's actually just attack. So even if you have a close combat weapon like the sledgehammer here, you would still be using this in a shoot action. To perform the action, you'll simply play your card and declare your target. But the target has to be in range. Often this will be dictated by the weapon, such as the sledgehammer here dictating it's in the same square. But others won't give any sort of indication of that, which means that they just have to be in line of sight. The way line of sight works is that you can see anyone in the same room as you, and the rooms are clearly denoted by colour and broken by walls and doorways. So in this situation here, this green guy can see the blue guy, the blue guy can see the green guy. As well as being able to see, however, the people in your room, if you're next to a doorway, you are then able to see everyone in the adjacent room. So the situation we have here is that blue can see and target the yellow character, but yellow can't see and target blue because they're not next to the doorway of the yellow room. So in this situation, grey can target everyone and blue can target everyone. The green guy can only target blue and the yellow guy can only target grey. Once you've declared your attack by placing the weapon face down on the table, you are then not able to use that weapon until you have reloaded it in the reload phase. So for example, blue will attack with the sledgehammer, grey who is in his space. So the sledgehammer says he does two damage. So he's played his card down and he's declared his target. Now he gives him the damage. So we place two of the blue blood drops on the grey player's track, starting with the left hand side and then filling along to the right. And as the character takes more damage, they then activate new action options or enhanced versions of the actions. So once they cross the line into free damage, they activate the double move and grab as opposed to a single move and grab. Once they move up to six damage, they activate move and shoot as opposed to shoot. It's important to note that that is a fixed order. You cannot shoot then move, it is move then shoot. And the same with the grabs, you've got to do the move first then the grab. And they'll keep taking damage this way until eventually it moves into the final section where there's the skull. This is the kill shot. Whoever delivers the kill shot has killed the character. At this point you'll finish the turn and then you'll score the board. Now you can do these as many times as you want. So you could do two run arounds or two move and grab 
or two shoots, for example. And there's no restriction on the order of the actions you perform. Once you've done your two actions, you then do a reload action. To reload a weapon, you'll simply move the ammo cubes listed on the weapon from your ammo box to your ammo reserve. So in this case, we just remove a yellow cube. Then pick the card back up into your hand and it's ready to attack with on the next turn by flipping it face up. So, score the board. The first blood gets one point, so the blue player in this situation gets one point, and then players get points depending on the amount of damage they've done, with any ties being broken by who did the damage first. So here we've got six damage from blue, so they've done the most, yellow's done the second most, and green the third. So blue would get eight, yellow six, and green four points. You would then return all the damage tokens to their respective players except for the kill shot and if it was done this 12th point of damage here which is called the overkill. Those instead take the place of the skull on the kill trap and the skull will go on the player who's been killed board covering up the highest number. This means that the next time they're killed, the person with the most damage only gets six points instead of eight. So the more you die, the less points you're worth. The other thing that happens when you do an overkill, as well as both damage tokens going onto the kill track rather than just one, is that a player gets targeted with a mark. And as it was the blue player who did the overkill, they place one of the grey players damage tokens in their mark spot. Now when the grey player next does damage to this blue player their mark will move down and become damage as well. This is only when damage is done not when additional marks are done. So if they did a new mark it would just sit up here with the other one. However you can only have a maximum of three marks from each player in your marks box. But what now happens to this dead grey player? Well, we take his figure off the board and the player draws a power-up card. If they have multiple power-up cards in hand, they'll then look at all of them and, as they did at the beginning of the game, choose one to discard, which will dictate where they respawn. So, having scored up anyone who was killed and then respawned, you then need to refresh anything that was taken off the board. So we draw new weapons for everywhere that has a space and place new ammo tokens out. Then play passes to the player on the left and you keep playing like this until all these skulls are taken. So when you're using all eight skulls, you play like this until the eighth skull is taken. Then, if this is your first game, stop the game there. Just call it sudden death. That's it. If it's not, you'll then enter frenzy mode, where each person gets one last turn. So, before you have your turns, anyone with no damage in their damage track will flip their boards. so that they have fewer points showing and they're no longer worth a first blood. Everyone will also flip their action tiles. These show what the new action options are. If you're going before the first player, you'll use the top section here. So you may take two actions, which can consist of either a move, reload, shoot, four moves, a double move and a grab. Or if you're the first player or going after the first player, you will do a double move, reload, shoot, or a triple move grab. And you may only perform one of these. Once the frenzy round's over, that's the end of the game. You'll then score up for your kill track here. So in this situation, we've got two, three, four of the blue, so they would get eight points at this stage. Grey and green only have one, whereas yellow has three. So yellow would get the six, 
grey and green, because they're drawing, would both get four. If we had a situation such as this, where blue and yellow are drawing, they would both get the eight points. However, because they are first and second, you then skip the six points. So the green player would get four points and the grey player two. Then do scoring up for each player's board as if that player had died. Each player will then reveal all their points tokens and sum them up. Whoever has the most wins the game. If there's a draw, whoever had the most on the kill track wins. And that is how to play Adrenaline from Czech Games Edition. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.